Hi, and thank you so much for tuning in today to the I Natural Body channel. This is Sonia coming to you with another video. Today, I'd like to share with you some tips on rebatching soap. Now, I'm not talking about remaking soap because that would entail, for the cold process method, us using a lye water solution. No, that's not what I'm talking about today. We're just going to rebatch some scraps from the cold process method. So I've been collecting over time um, several pounds of uh, soap that needs to be rebatched, excuse me, bits and pieces here and there. And also I did have a batch that did not um, get as hard as I would have liked it to. So I'm also going to chop that up with a cutting tool and also add that to my rebatched soap. Now, I'm just gonna let you enjoy the video, but I'm going to give you some tips along the way. First of all, you see there that I have the weigh scale. The reason that I have the weigh scale is because I like to measure and write down as much as I can for each one of my soap creations. In this way, if it's something that's very nice and you get compliments on, you have something to work from. So once again, although this is a rebatching um, soap, I'm still writing down as much information while I'm creating this new soap from old soap. So everything from the weight, how much additives I'm adding to the process. And remember, always think safety. This particular cutting tool is not is not um, very sharp, but it's sharp enough to slice through these bars of soap. Additionally, I'm covering my work area with a seal pad mat, so it's something that I can easily toss in some water and it will be cleaned immediately. This one got repurposed from the kitchen into my soap studio. Additionally, remember your gloves. And if you have some free labor nearby, you definitely want to take advantage of that. In this video, Sage is helping me. She is so elated to be helping me with the process of breaking up the soap bits and putting them into the bas into the, um, the bowl. So for this rebatch of soap, which is going to be a hot process um, soap, I want to really play up the additives in this soap because one of the main reasons why I'm rebatching is not only because they're scraps, but I had a batch going bad, so to speak, where it was entirely too soft for me to put out and I had waited weeks and it never hardened up. So right here is an additive of aloe vera juice and I get that from Walmart in a bulk um, quantity. You can find it in the pharmacy section at Walmart, but it's aloe vera juice and it's from 100% um, aloe vera gel fillets or fillets, however way you say it. Right here, because the bar I also want it to be exfoliating is one ounce of, excuse me, it's a half of an ounce of pink Himalayan sea salt and the goal here is to allow the sea salt to be um, an exfoliator. Right here is a half of an ounce of sodium lactate. Not only will the pink Himalayan sea salt add to the hardness of the bar, but also our liquid salt in the form of sodium lactate, it also will aid in hardening of the bar. And lastly, I have one full ounce of water. This water, I already understand that it will evaporate from the bar. So we'll go ahead and get our crock pot warmed up and I'll add the water first. And when I get the consistency um, of the uh, batter that I'm looking for, then I will go ahead and add these different additives to the bar. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so excited that you are a part of the iNatural Body channel and a part of our family. Um, 
those of you who are aware of me, thank you so much for following along in the video. I love shopping at thrift shops and I love to look for things that I can repurpose into my soap studio. Here is one of those items that I did find at a thrift shop. I want to say no less than a couple of bucks, folks. I was able to find a crock pot that I've repurposed specifically for my um, soap studio and I've labeled it easily here where I could see it that I'm not to use this one downstairs or in the kitchen what have you this stays upstairs in my studio and I've labeled it for um, hot processing soap so if you have thrift shops near you people are always getting rid of these things I used one of these for hot processing and I found another one but a much smaller one that I use for um, potpourri um, scenting my home. So as you can see, I already have my soap bits up in here and a lot of the soap in here is olive oil based, but there's different recipes in here. So I'm not trying to remake soap per se, so I'm not adding any lye water solution or what have you because it's already in the bars, the broken pieces like this but I do want to get the consistency to where I can mix it really good with my um, stick blender. So what I wanna do is make sure that I power this thing on low because it's gonna sit for quite some time and I don't mind. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my water. As far as a time frame, how long do you want to allow this soap to cook down? What you're looking for is a fluid consistency. All the bits have melted and you're able to easily scoop it out and put it into molds. Now for me that went over 24 hours because I allowed it just to cook on low where I was able to stir it from time to time throughout the day and able to get other things done. But in the end, I promise you, you will be very satisfied. Here's what I came out with. So truly the old adage of something old, something new applies to the rebatching of soap. I absolutely love the color. I love the texture, the character. I love that I can use these bars immediately and I don't have to wait an extended period of time. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a wonderful day. Bye.